Hi, everyone, and welcome to our Facebook Live AMA featuring current students from our Master of Science in Threat and Response Management program. My name is Kelsey Diaz, and I'm pleased to be your host today. I'm joined by current threat and response students Ann Kiplinger, Chris Kreis, and Paul McFarland, who are here to answer your questions about the graduate student experience at the University of Chicago. Before we begin, I just want to make a note that we'll do our best to get every question answered, but if we did miss your question, please feel free to email me at trm-admissions at uchicago.edu. All right, let's get started. Okay, first question here. What made you decide on this program? Did you have other options that you considered? I'll start off with that. Uh, the answer is yes. Um, what made me choose this program was I was actually looking for a very strong analytical background to kind of uh, gear towards the public sector, that being um, government and federal jobs. I want to go back out to Washington, D.C., where I worked before, and, and I love that type of work. And I was looking for a program that could kind of tailor the skill set towards that. Uh, that being said, I was kind of looking at different types of platforms that other schools um, had, and nobody really tailored it. Um, towards the type of career field I was looking at and threat and response management did. Uh, I was looking at FEMA, DHS, and having this kind of program that could answer a lot of the anomalies that I, from a private sector, didn't um, understand or, or was not aware of. I, uh, it was the perfect marriage for me coming from a finance background. Uh, for me, I was in uh, I come from an operations background. I've been in emergency medical services for uh, the last 12 years and uh, I've been deployed on uh, five different federal deployments with uh, FEMA and uh, also with the U.S. Forest Service. And um, the, the micro view that EMS was giving me uh, for uh, large scale disasters um, just wasn't really enough for me. So I wanted to uh, to kind of expand my horizons into that macro view of uh, emergency management. And uh, when looking at different programs, uh, I essentially went to people that I respected uh, within the industry who are already emergency managers, uh, a couple with FEMA and a couple in uh, Colorado where I live. And every single one of them said that if you wanna get into the business and you want a master's degree that this was the uh, university to go to. So here I am. And I uh, have a little bit of a different background. So just a little more than a year ago, I kind of made a career change, um, stayed with the same company, but switched over to business continuity management. And um, I felt like going into this program sort of accelerated my learning curve. Um, and I had always kind of regretted not getting a master's degree. And um, it, so this kind of just fell in my lap. Someone told me she had heard about it and it literally is within walking distance of my office. So it really couldn't have been more convenient, but um, that's how I got into it. Excellent, thank you everybody. Okay, here's our next question here right away. <clears throat> what has been your biggest hurdle during the program and how did you overcome it? I can, I can lead it off. Um, mine was probably managing my time. And by that, I mean uh, that I probably spent too much time on it um, because it's been so long since I've been in school. I was a little obsessive about the studying. I have a lot of time on the weekends to devote to this. And um, I sort of let it take over, um, probably didn't, didn't have as much balance as I maybe could have. So um, I have that perspective now, but I probably didn't uh, when I started back in the fall. Thanks, Anne. I think that's great. And I'll piggyback off Anne too. I think that that's a very important aspect. With this program, you're gonna see a lot of diversity in the classes that um, you're attending. Uh, some may be more data-driven, while others might be policy or, or kind of uh, logic. And therefore, you're you're looking at um, a way to balance out the time allocated to understand the concepts. And so from a finance background, some of these concepts are born and they would take more time than say Paul, who, who has some of that background and, and familiarity with uh, FEMA. Uh, so I think that to be proactive and really be diligent about you know, setting timeframes as to when you're going to 
uh, accomplish certain um, study, whether it be studying or homework assignments. Uh, I think that was one thing that time management was really a big aspect of that. Yeah, I would agree with that. The time management aspect is is definitely some something you have to take in. Um, you know, University of Chicago. I mean, everyone knows it's no slouch, and uh, you know they have very high expectations of you. And uh, but I think that if you're interested in this program, you should really have high expectations of yourself. And you know, you're not applying to the University of Chicago because you just want the degree you're applying here because you want what comes with that degree. And, you know, the level of education that we've had here in the first year, I think has been top notch and really second to none. Um, so time management for all of the projects and things um, is definitely very important for me, you know, living in Colorado and going to school in Chicago was definitely a, a hurdle for me, but um, you know, you figure out when to, get the cheap flights and uh you know find a cheap hotel and you know it, it it ends up not being too bad uh you know if you're in a different part of the country and coming in and um you know you find yourself busy uh throughout the weekend and you know it gives you an opportunity to to you know really see a beautiful city that i had never been to before so it, you know it's almost like a little mini vacation once a month Thank you, Paul. Well said. All right, our next question here. What is your dream job and how do you think this degree will help you in your career? I can start. And again, I'm a little bit unique in that I'm not looking for a different job. I don't want a different job than I have now. Um, my title is Crisis Analysis and Response. Um, and so really this program, a lot of what we learned has fed into what I'm doing at work right now. So it's really enhanced my ability to do my current job effectively. And I feel like what my current job calls on me for aligns really well with what my strengths are. So this is kind of just taking it up a notch. I'm gonna agree with Anne, um, similar to what I'm doing and uh, I'll actually combine it with what she had just mentioned and I'll switch it over. Uh, for me, uh, my dream job, something that I've been working towards is uh, creating gap analysis and doing um, establishing emergency management programs for underprivileged areas uh, throughout the world. Um, so it's actually uh, something that I'm hoping to uh, integrate my capstone project into uh, uh, that can become kind of a, uh, a springboard into uh, something for me uh, in the future. Um, right now I'm working, uh, I'm an emergency management program manager for Colorado University. And uh, that's really been a, uh, a really great uh, first step into emergency management. And it's allowed me to um, kind of see the ins and outs of, of how it works. Uh, but, you know, taking that next step, I think, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of places throughout the world that just, you know, the thought of emergency management to them when they're just trying to feed themselves every day, you know, becomes a back burner uh, topic for them. So to be able to go into there and, and, um, you know, establish these programs so that we can increase the resiliency uh, for the underserved types of populations throughout the world would uh, be ideally what I'd like to do. Thank you very much. Uh, on to our next question. Have you been able to take advantage of services outside of the program itself? For example, have you visited the Career Center or um, have you gotten any kind of writing assistance, things like that? I can jump into this one. The answer is yes. I've definitely made sure to take full advantage um, of improving my writing, whether it required it or not. And in some cases it did. Uh, getting some mentorship and, and, and some tutoring from some of the teachers and kind of getting guidance about what we did in a class assignment or, or career guidance. Um, and that's one thing that's very unique about this program is the level of support within the community uh, that, and the level of respect everybody has for each other. Um, and I, I noticed that definitely with trying to find mentorship and guidance. Um, I know that uh, 
uh, I've met with you and you've been supportive, uh, Kelsey, and then um, St. Caroline and Chris, they've, they've just been tremendous. Uh, I, I can't think uh, enough of them. Um, I would also say they, there was another element to that or a facet to that question, which was outside of this. Oh, so the Career Center. Yeah, I, I did. I think it's very important uh, to attend uh, the career fairs. Looking, I think it's kind of what's out there, and, and there might be something that you find interesting. And this kind of falls back on the prior question, which is, have you found your dream job? And this might be able to kind of open doors that you might not have thought about previously, um, with the different types of positions and everything that are open. So um, yes, I would I would definitely encourage it uh, if you do attend uh, to take advantage. I think one of the things that I really enjoy, you know, since I have to fly in every weekend, I, I don't get to, you know, be present in Chicago throughout the month. But one of the great things that the program does is uh, provide workshops over the weekend while uh, we are scheduled for classes, uh, which is great. Um, so we've had writing workshops, we've had workshops to work on uh, federal resumes and, you know, general resume writing and, you um, you know, different speakers that have been able to come in that really enhances the educational experience. Yeah, I would echo what Paul said. Um, I've attended a lot of those lunchtime seminars. And um, to Chris's point, sometimes it's a topic that you don't really know you're interested in until you hear someone talk about it. Um, or you think you've kind of got the writing piece down and then you hear, uh, someone give you tips that sort of help you tighten it up. Um, or even there was a, a workshop on how to use the, the school's library uh, website, which I never would have known how to find some of the resources that I ended up using for a lot of my projects. So all around very helpful. Excellent, thank you. Next question, what electives have you taken and what electives do you hope to take in the future? So we actually, um, our electives will probably start this upcoming year and from which I think, uh, I would probably, I really like system dynamics. So uh, I would look for Nacho's class for the second portion of that. Um, and I would also look, the gentleman from Argonne um, that does with biological data, um, Paul, I think you might have some information on that. Um, I think those are the two that I'm, I'm probably most interested in as electives right now. I'll definitely um, probably try to take the cybersecurity class um, just because it's always kind of an undercurrent in what we look at at my company as threats. So even though we have 300 people in our global information security group, um, for me to be able to speak to them and kind of understand the world that they live in would be very beneficial. Yeah, for me, I'm looking at, uh, I'd really enjoy the business continuity um, class and the, uh, uh, like Ann said, the cybersecurity class. Um, you know, I think that that's a, a growing threat uh, anywhere and it doesn't matter how large or small of a emergency management shop uh, someone has, you know, that's, that's an easy way for people to get in. So I think that that would be, um, that would be really important. Sure. And speaking of cybersecurity, um, have any of you decided on a degree concentration, if at all, for the TRM program? Uh, I think I, I, I think I was waiting to <clears throat> kind of unwind a little bit from the year and then sure. uh, decide my concentration over the over the summer and then um, you know base the electives I'm taking on the on the concentration that I'm going to pursue. I would agree with that. I think that uh, I was just kind of trying to digest everything and uh, from the year and really kind of focus on where I'm at currently within uh, my career and where I want to kind of leverage this next year for, and I think it would probably be something analytical and, and, and data driven. That's kind of what I'm leaning towards right now. Yeah, and I would agree with Paul. I'm still kind of waiting to make that determination. You know, and I think what's great about the, the first year is that it allows, the classes are, you know, a very broad range of emergency management. So it's not just a singular focus. 
And uh, I think that's one of the really good things that this program provides. And so after the, by the time the first year is done, you have an idea of, of what type of emergency management you want to get into or business continuity or, or risk management or, or anything like that. So, um, you know, I think then, you know, you're provided the summer to really decide what your concentration is going to be uh, so that you can really hit that in uh, during your second year. Sure, thank you. And just for reference, everybody, uh, we did introduce concentrations within the Master of Science in Threat and Response Management. And those are Cyber Risk Analysis, Homeland Security, and Environmental Security. So incoming students and current students will have the opportunity to choose a concentration if they wish. Okay, next question. Oh, this is a fun one. How would you describe the U Chicago culture and what's your favorite part about studying at U Chicago? I would say that they're very supportive. Um, at first I was a little intimidated. You get, a, um, you get some very intelligent people uh, with some very impressive backgrounds. And I think that um, the one thing I've, I've learned is that even just within our cohort, uh, people are very supportive of other people's success and, and try and help them improve um, things that they might be interested in. Uh, so I would say that it's not only supportive, but they're, they're caring. Um, yeah, I, I, very favorable. I have a very, very favorable impression. People aren't afraid to kind of introduce themselves and um, kind mm -hmm. of um, be inclusive. I think that's probably a good word to use as well. Uh, very inclusive um, environment. I like the fact that um, you're kind of encouraged to challenge uh, what other people say or think to get diverse opinions out there, um, including the instructors. So um, in general, I would say the instructors have been very open to, you know, us kind of questioning something that they say and then they defend it or it elicits an interesting discussion. So that's been refreshing to you know, not feel like there's necessarily a right or wrong answer all the time, but that you can um, have different viewpoints and get all those on the table. Yeah, something I really enjoy about it is uh, you, everybody comes prepared. I mean, the bar is set really high. We all know we're students at the University of Chicago and um, I think that's reflected in a lot of people's work. And so for the time that we are in class and then the, uh, the time that I've spent, you know, over Zoom or conference calls during projects and things like that, everybody comes prepared. So there's not a lot of wasted time. And uh, I really enjoy that. Um, so. Okay. So then how has it been transitioning, transitioning to remote study for the spring quarter? Since we were in an executive style program, um, you only come once per month or a Thursday through Saturday. What is remote learning like for you? Obviously nice being able to stay in our own homes. Um, and they've been sensitive to the other things that we have going on outside of school um, by, you know, modifying the, the classroom time and things like that. Um, the part I miss, which I wouldn't have known I missed uh, if we had started it off like this in the fall is the personal interaction with the students in the class because um, you learn so much from the other people in the cohort. And it's just not as easy to have that um, organic kind of interaction uh, over Zoom. But the instructors have done a good job of using Zoom effectively. I think um, they're, all of them uh, were pretty good about using the breakout sessions. So, you know, you were put in little groups for 10 or 15 minutes at a time. And um, so that was fun to be able to, you know, chat with people, even though we weren't sitting next to each other in class. Yeah, I think it's been a, a decent transition. To be honest, I uh, I don't I don't really enjoy uh, video conferencing a ton. I really like the personal interaction because I think uh, I think you're able to get and give a lot more in a conversation uh, when you're actually present 
uh, with a group. But I think for uh, for the climate that we're in, it was a necessity. And I think uh, that the university did a really wonderful job. It was a very seamless transition. It didn't seem like in the first week that there were all these glitches. And, you know, first day of class, the, the professors were ready. And, um, you know, we were able to, to do the classes, you know, as if we were uh, actually present to the best, you know, to the best that we could. Um, but I would definitely echo what Ann said that I definitely miss the, uh, the interaction with the, the rest of our cohort. I think uh, I can't speak for other cohorts, but I think cohort 13 in particular has, has really uh, forged some really good relationships with each other uh, that I think you know, will be lasting after our program. And uh, so I just I miss my friends, you know, so not being able to to hang out with them on the weekends that I'm out in Chicago, you know, it, I, I wish I could still do that. But, uh, you know, this is the next best thing, I guess. Ditto. We miss all of you, too. We hope to get back soon. Okay, how are your relationships with instructors? For example, are instructors there for extra support if you need it? Yes, they're terrific. Uh, they make themselves available. Um, and I've reached out to professors. This goes back to my comment about mentorship where uh, problems like we had a leadership class, for instance, and you know, making sure that we follow uh, the ethical guidelines as well as the, you know our, our internal core principles of you know making sure that we do the right thing, and you know even prompting scenarios and getting some feedback um, to give you the right guidance. Uh, so I think that you have professors that are well established in their field um, that are always willing uh, to teach you, um, and they don't just restrict themselves to to the hours of the classroom. I wouldn't abuse it or recommend that, but um, they are they are there to support you. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. I don't think of any of the six classes we had that there's any um, teacher or TA that I didn't reach out to at some point. And they're always really responsive. Um, in one case, I sent something to a TA to have her look at. She wasn't really sure, so she sent it to the instructor. And then we ended up getting on a call to talk about it. And um, you know, they, they're always very responsive to email or willing to set up um, a call to talk through something. So it's kind of nice, even though it's a long period of time between classes, you do have the opportunity to touch base and make sure you're on the right track on your assignments in between. Yeah, I would absolutely agree with that. I, the professors that I've interacted with you know, when I first got into this program, I, I knew I wanted to do emergency management, but in terms of how I wanted to concentrate uh, within that um, was, uh, seemed to be a pretty far reaching thing for me because all I had known for a really long time was being a paramedic. Um, and uh, through conversations with um, my professors outside of class, they uh, were able to uh, help me to highlight where my strengths were and how I could apply those strengths within the emergency management field. Uh, and that, that's really something that helped me to uh, create my own path within, the, uh, within that field. Great. And I know you all mentioned, you know, missing your friends from the program. Do you interact often with each other outside of the classroom? And what are some fun ways that allow you to stay connected with your fellow classmates since going remote? Well, we have a, we have a group me chat with our entire cohort. So um, it's a nice way not only to kind of make sure if you have a question about an assignment or something, but um, you know, we keep up on personal things that are going on with people too. Um, when you spend as many hours as we have in the classroom with each other, you get to know, you know, whose wife just had a baby, Paul, or, <laughs> you know, something uh, that might be going on with someone else. So um, that's one way that we kind of all stay connected. 
Yeah, one of the great things about the uh, the Zoom meetings is everyone got to meet my daughter because uh, I had I had a Zoom class like three days after she was born. <laughs> so so that was a good time. No, we uh, yeah, we use that group me chat and I've um, you know, there's some of the students that uh, a couple of the students that I'm we're hoping to work on a capstone project next year. So uh, the three of us have been talking a bunch just over the phone and text and what have you. I mean, we're one's in California, one's in Chicago, and then, you know, there's me. So, you know, right in the middle. Um, so, you know, you do what you can. I, I, you know, I think we're all looking forward to uh, being able to be in the same city again, but, you know, until then we, we make it work. I think some of them, uh, there are some people that are located in Chicago and they do get together or they plan get togethers and everyone's, they're very inclusive. It's just logistics are sometimes a challenge for some of us. But uh, if that's kind of what the person was asking about the answers, yes. Um, and other cohorts as well, they're, they've been very open. I know that with cohort 12, I've met a few of them and, and uh, you know, they've invited me out to uh, one of their happy hours and, and they were very, um, like I had mentioned earlier, very inclusive. So yeah, there are, there are things like that. And I think that I know within our cohort, we were trying to get better about maybe planning like an event or something like that um, for us to get together, even if it is via Zoom. That's great, don't lose that spirit. Okay, here's an interesting one. How do you decompress when class is over? Happy hour. I build furniture. <laughs> yeah, I um, I make sure to build in time to my schedule that doesn't have anything to do with school or work. And it's almost like taking medicine for me. Like I know I should do other things to make sure there's some balance in my life. So um, usually at some point on the weekend, I work as a culinary assistant at a, in cooking classes. So very different than school or work to make sure That's there's cool. something, something really different mixed into my life. I have a, a different answer as well. Uh, yeah, so sometimes I'll, uh, I'll have an event planned like with some friends or something like that. Um, and like Paul, I like to restore things every once in a while. So sometimes I'll work on a project uh, when I have some free time and try and accomplish it before the next semester. Uh, that doesn't always happen. Uh, sometimes it lingers for a couple semesters, but uh, um, yeah, I always, I think it's really important to try and like, plan something to kind of commemorate, um, you know, your accomplishment for that semester. Um, and it could be something simple like, uh, um, you know, going to a sporting event, which actually has kind of been a problem recently. Um, but, you know, something to that degree. Yeah, I'm a pretty family oriented person. So, you know, fun time for me is, is being able to you know, just spend time with my family. And so typically, you know, after the Zoom classes, especially, um, you know, I'd get done with that. And then the next couple hours before I either had to do work for school or work for work, I, you know, uh, make some time to just, you know, enjoy, I, I have two young kids. So, you know, enjoy just being a dad and hanging out with my wife and stuff. And, you know, that helps me to decompress. Thank you all. Okay, last question here already. What is one piece of advice you'd like to share with incoming students that you wish someone told you as you started out in the program? I would say to not, not take yourself so seriously um, because it had been so long since I had been um, in school, I really probably um, let myself get pulled underwater a little bit with the workload more than I had to. Um, and I tried to balance that with, you know, kind of really using the material to, and taking it to my job so that it felt relevant and there was a, a purpose to it. Um, but I would probably try to be more conscientious of having that balance. I think um, making sure that you're able to relay the tools learned and apply them towards your existing, if you are working while you're doing this, um, you know, to your existing uh, position. Uh, I think that's very beneficial and making sure that you don't just take something that you learned in the classroom and, and, and silo it just for an educational purpose, but you actually apply it to your daily life. 
right, we're professional life. Yeah, I think something for me was I was genuinely intimidated, you know, the first first couple of days that I came in, um, you know, like like we've said before, I mean, you know, the University of Chicago is a serious university and, you know, I'm, just, I'm, I'm a small town kid from Colorado, you know, and so, uh, you know, coming into the big city and big university and everything for me was was a little intimidating. But, um, you know, I you knuckle down and you do the work and I, you know, I think you, you surprise yourself, you know, and I think within our cohort, you know, us being able to bounce questions and ideas off each other uh, really helped all of us succeed within the program. Thank you. Well, that about wraps up our Facebook live AMA with TRM. Thank you so much to Anne, Chris and Paul. And thank you to everyone who tuned into our conversation. Have a great rest of your evening. Thank you.